Hi guys, I'm Marky again and welcome back to Revit House. So creating Revit family. What are the basics and what are the important things and or elements that we need to know when building a Revit family? So to start up, we need to click the new file here and select a category or we just need to click the application menu and the new family so those two are just same thing so it's up to you guys what you wanted to, sh to choose from so yep so this is our uh, new family uh, templates these are pathed already to the metric by default Autodesk is pathed under English I English I is the imperial templates of Revit so be careful on this make sure that you are pathed correctly to the to the correct template that you are using so here in Singapore we are using metric so I need to use the English folder which contains our metric template so you will be prompted by this window with bunch of categories these are all Revit categories Revit family is very uh, organized in terms of categories so a casework is a casework a door is a door and so on and so forth so you have to choose carefully what category or a family are you building in so there's also a generic model so-called generic model that are used for those elements that are not really uh, categorizable if there's such a word so it's uncategorized that you don't know what to choose from so you can use the generic model for it okay so maybe we could start up with our generic model so let's open up our metric generic model to study what are the elements inside the rabbit family so yeah let's click open to open the metric generic model So this is your user interface for your Revit family. You still have your properties palette and your project browser palette. So these are all your navigation for your view. You can see you have your floor plan as default, ceiling plan, one 3D view, and four elevations. Okay, then you will, on the drawing plane, you will be provided by these two lines called reference planes. So this reference plane has a name, which is center left right, and center front back later we will discuss it more then you will have also your ribbon and your ribbon tabs so ribbon tabs we are limited to create insert annotate view manage add-ins and modify so under create you will have your ribbon panels and your forms your model text many tools reference line and reference planes and so on and so forth you still have your quick access toolbar option options bar and you still have your uh, status bar and your view control uh, tool now we're gonna start to build our Revit family to start with we need to have some reference planes so reference plane is found from the create ribbon tab and the datum panel so what we can do we just click to the reference plane or simply command the RP so RP is the command for reference plane. So you have an option to draw a line or to pick lines. So when you're drawing a line, you just have to click two times so that you will have a straight line. So Revit will always help you to snap it on the 90 degrees angle. So it is easy. But my most of the time, I use pick lines. So I get used to using pick lines because I find it much more easy to use it so to use pick lines I just have to provide some offset so I'll put 500 here and then I click my middle mouse button on this uh, on our drawing pane so w once we click the middle mouse button in our drawing pane now we can pick our reference which is I will choose the, the reference plane on the middle then I'll just have to create one on the left and one on the right 
so make just make sure that uh, you won't double the thing or the other reference plane on the left because Revit sometimes uh, when you, Revit users sometimes when they pick they don't look into the where is the element will be created so like for example here there is a blue dotted line meaning the refer reference plane will be created on the right hand side so just make sure before you click you just have to you see first where is the line will be created or the reference plane will be created okay so we'll just have to pick the line and that's it and then I will do the same thing on our horizontal reference plane yep one on the top and one on the bottom now next thing we need to do is to name our reference plane like the default reference plane it has a name center left and right and the other one is center front and back so we'll just use the left right front back name for our reference plane so like for example here I'll just name it as left or you can use your company uh, initial on the front just to keep the family um, the originator of the family to be under your company so for example for me it will be Revit House I'll just use the RH underscore left then this one will be RH underscore right and this one will be RH underscore back and last one is the rh underscore front there you go now we have ident identity of our reference plane so that we will not be confused which reference plane to 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 have a reference to now that we have the reference plane next thing we need to do is to have some constraints and parameter so what is constraints constraints is the uh, defining relationships and interdependency between elements so one example of uh, constraints is by using dimension constraints so how to do dimension either you click the the one from our quick access toolbar dimension or simply command di so how to do dimensions in Revit in our family we just have to pick parallel lines so for this side for this case we need these three lines to be picked continuously so one two and then three so then to finish the command you just have to click anywhere position your dimension where do you want to position then you click you pick your mouse on a blank space there you go so once pick there's some constraints that are already visible in our dimension we have the lock constraints which are this padlock and the equalization constraints so equalization constraints uh, we'll show it how it works but for now we just have to click our equalization constraints to toggle it so there you go now we have our equalization constraints so how equalization constraints work so for example we just need to escape escape to cancel the command for example I need to move this reference plane so when I move it yes you can see the left hand side of our reference plane of our family is moving as well so that's how equalization works whatever happens to this reference plane will also apply to the other reference plane so that's how relationship of constraints of element works using constraints so we have a few more constraints that we are going to use uh, with our family discussion so we'll just have to slowly build and uh, see what are the other constraints that we're gonna use now we just have to have an overall dimension so command di and pick the left and the right reference plane then pick position your dimension and pick anywhere 
uh, in the blank space yep then we'll do the same thing on our uh, horizontal reference planes or the front back reference planes so we'll just do the equalization there then click the equalization and then I'll click the overall there you go then escape escape to cancel the command then we will give um, assigned parameters to our overall dimension so we click our dimension the overall dimension and then up here we will have the label so under label we can create a new parameter so by right most of the family uh, different family have different default um, parameters so generic model is a family that doesn't have a default parameter so we have to create our own parameter so I have to put the the window dialog box parameter properties dialog box to for you to be able to see what will happen to the 1400 so when I, when I click our parameter or create new parameter tool up here this will be prompted and then we will just have to name our parameter so in naming parameter the only thing that are not allowed or the most thing that are not allowed are the um, the dash or the hyphen the of course the plus and the asterisk and the slash because those are the symbols for our uh, for our multiplication division addition and subtraction so when we are naming our family parameters we have to be careful we have to be careful for example you want to put your company initial in in your parameter you you either use underscore or spacebar so don't use dash because it will revit will read it as rh minus with okay so we'll have to use a either space or underscore so for me i'll always use i always use underscore so rh underscore with and i will assign it under group parameter under dimensions and type parameters soon we will discuss or uh have um, emphasis on the difference with the type parameters and an instance parameters so we'll have we'll just have to click ok yep and then now we have the rh width so most of the time when i build a family the horizontal uh, the dimension i always put it as a width and then the vertical dimension here will be the uh, depth so we'll do the same thing click the dimension and click the create parameter under label so we'll just have to create rh underscore depth okay also under group parameter dimensions and a type parameter there so now we have the two parameters that we we have which is the rh width and the rh depth so when we use the width uh, when we assign the parameter we also need to flex it we don't have any element yet but we still need to flex our parameters so that we will know that this will this parameters works so what we can do is we click under properties panel here we can just click this family types dialog box so I'll just have to cancel this first then this family types prompt or dialog box will contain our parameters so we have our rh depth and rh width so when we flex we try to flex smaller and we flex bigger than the one that we created for meaning so more than 1000 or lesser than 1000 so both sides we need to work uh, we need to put the value so for example I put 100 first smaller than 1000 so it works then 
I put 2500 then I click apply so it also works then I'll go back to my 1000 value I click ok this it works then for the width we'll just have to let's say 100 apply so it's working and we go 2500 apply yep and it's working then I'll just maybe I'll settle with 1500 apply then it's all good then we click OK now we have two parameters of course these are the X and Y parameter we also need the Z parameter which is the height so for us to be able to create the height parameter we need the uh, elevation view so most of the time I'll go to front elevation so here in our front elevation we just have to zoom extent zoom extent is ZE okay so ZE so it will zoom extend to our uh, elements now we just have to create our reference plane so from the reference level we just have to create our new reference plane then I'll have to pick lines then maybe I'll put it about um, 2000 then I'll pick here there so I'll name this reference plane okay so in this case I will not create a center of the height I will just keep the top portion of the height so then I will provide dimensions so I will provide dimension for the height so I click the reference plane so at the bottom there's there are two elements one is a level which is reference level and when I tab it it's a reference plane reference okay so there are implications on clicking the reference level and the reference plane so what I usually do is I click the reference plane we will see later what is the difference by clicking reference plane and by clicking level so for now I will click the reference plane there you go then I'll put a parameter of RH height under a type parameter and under a group parameter dimensions so what is that group parameter actually that one is when I click family types this one this is the one that uh, the grouping or ar uh, the arrangement of the of your parameter so you can group it okay I'll just click close or maybe I'll go back to family types and flex our height so flex our height maybe about 100 apply so it's working um, 3000 apply yep and I'll go back and settle to the 2000 okay so this parameter you can arrange it so if you want to have the width first depth and height then you can just click the width and move it upward so move up there width depth and height in case you have a misspelling you can just click the modify you can always click this and then modify or transfer it under different group or yeah so either plumbing facing other yep then click OK OK then we just click OK then there you go we have our reference plane set up now we'll, next will be the form so if you like the content of this lecture series please click the like button and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe and click that bell button for more of this lecture series. Talk to you soon!